Bravo, runway. Okay. Aircraft are operated in various meteorological conditions. Sometimes very low temperatures are met on ground, and all systems must remain operative. There must be no icing in pipes, no damage to computers, engines must start properly, and so on. The minimum temperature which may be found on ground is around minus 50 degrees Celsius on just a few days. However, for a very large number of transport airplanes flying worldwide, the probability of finding such conditions in operations, or even after a diversion, is extremely low. Therefore, on Airbus aircraft, all certification tests are not always performed with such low temperatures. The target is well below minus 30 degrees Celsius. If temperatures close to minus 50 degrees Celsius are found, only the tests with engines running are performed. For companies operating frequently with very low temperatures, additional tests may be performed, possibly with additional equipment. Usually, Airbus performs these tests at Iqaluit Airport in Canada, where there is a large apron for wide-body airplanes. The temperature is around minus 30 degrees for a couple of weeks every year in January and February. The tests may also be performed at the McKinley Climatic Laboratory at Eglin Air Force Base, Florida. The climatic chamber allows aircraft as large as the A350 to be tested. The minimum temperature is minus 40 degrees Celsius and down to minus 54 degrees Celsius for a turnaround. The advantage is that the tests can be performed any time during the year. However, there are some minor limitations. Whenever possible, and depending on which type of new systems are installed on the aircraft, two cold soak campaigns are performed. The first one is carried out on the airplane not equipped with the cabin to check the reliability of all the technical equipment, including the engines, and the other one with the entire cabin installation. Two types of test are performed. The turnaround allows the operation of the airplane for a short stop at the gate to be validated. For the night stop test, the aircraft spends a full night on the apron. The aim is to validate the procedures to start all the systems after a night stop. Some precautions must be taken before the execution of both tests. For example, the type of engine oil must be agreed with the engine manufacturer. The temperature limitation for the operation of the various computers should be confirmed. And the tyre manufacturer should also confirm the specific operation procedures, if any. The turnaround test simulates a short stop at the gate with passengers disembarking and embarking and involves the opening of all doors, including the cargo doors. Potable water and waste systems are also operated according to the standard procedures. The air conditioning system remains operative with power provided by the APU or via a ground system. The duration of the turnaround depends on the aircraft type it could be one hour for a single aisle and longer for a long-range aircraft. The key issue for the turnaround is usually the engine start capability as it cools down quickly. The night stop of an aircraft needs careful preparation. The batteries are removed and maintained in a warm area. Protections are installed on all aircraft parts. All the tanks linked to the cabin operation are drained, potable water, waste and galleys. All items of equipment not necessary for the initial waking up are switched off. At the end of the cold soak period, the batteries are installed, the protections are removed and the APU is started. 
the airplane is progressively heated up, thanks to a ground cut or with the APU. All the systems are progressively switched on as the temperature increases. When a positive temperature is reached in the cabin, the potable water tank is filled up. The most critical issue is still the engine start. It is performed according to the recommendations of the engine manufacturer. When started, they are maintained at idle to heat up the oil. When the oil has reached a minimum temperature, a slight increase of the thrust is made to check the engine response. Then all the systems are operated. Flight controls, braking, potable water, waste and so on. The night stop tests are usually performed in two steps. One with a short cool down period, such as three hours, and the final one with a full night, around 12 hours. After the night stop, the crew makes an acceleration stop in order to check that the engines are operating properly and that the thrust reverser's deployment is normal. At the end of all the tests, a short flight is usually performed to confirm that there is no anomaly. The aircraft may be operated on a contaminated runway and specific precautions need to be taken for the operations. The landing distance may be increased. There may be a limitation of the crosswind and on the use of the thrust reversers. There may be leaks in the various circuits and a thorough check must be performed after each test to determine whether this is acceptable or not. For very low temperatures or even to accelerate the operations, a heater may be used in the cabin. The heater may also be utilized to increase the temperature of the engine, mainly the gearbox. During all the tests, precautions must be taken to maintain the flight test installation permanently available. The mechanic team have to work in very difficult conditions especially when there is an additional intervention on an engine or on a system outside the airplane with the wind chill effect. They must have an igloo available. In addition, there must be enough mechanics so that none of them has to work in such difficult conditions for too long. The general flight planning must be prepared in advance to allow the test airplane to reach the chosen airport as soon as the right weather conditions are expected.